Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're just going to digest a bit. Hopefully some of the things that we talk about will be some of the things that you're thinking about as well. That would be the best. Uh, you know, but before we get started, I have a song. Come I'm on, you've been waiting for this but I'm all not, weekend. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm not going to sing it, but I have someone else who's going to sing it. Excuse me, he's going to sing it. Oh, okay, your it, phone. Yes, my phone is going to sing it. Uh, there, this is with regards to Matthew chapter 6. And I have to preface this song because it's not the music, Pastor Forey, that you would normally listen to. In fact, it's not the kind of music most of you would listen to, but... It's awesome, Still and good. it's the words. It's talking about the lilies and the, the flowers. As Pastor Dave said, he had to just stop and smell the flowers. Look at the flowers. Look at the lilies. So here we go. Beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Hey, I would like, listen to that. I, yeah. yeah. I don't mind it. You know what? It's the words. Words are great, yeah. It, it, the words make the song, and I think you can listen to any genre of music if the words are anointed and they're scripture. So, hey, that's con called Consider the Lilies by the Chapmans for anyone <laughs> that is interested in that. But it's such a good verse, Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus is just saying, slow down. Think about today. You know, today's go. He actually says today has enough cares of its own. So, how do you deal with that? Well, um, one of the things is obviously Jesus points out. He says, "Aren't you more than more value than they?" And so, the idea that I believe and we believe in the Scripture says that we're created in the image of God, and so we're the pinnacle of His creation. The idea that He breathed life into us. He didn't do that to the flowers or the planets or anything else that He made. He didn't even make the angels. In his own image. So when I think about that, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Um, if God will provide for, for the birds and the flowers, of course he's going to provide for me as well. Because he's also promised it. And so I put my thoughts, as Pastor Dave was saying, on scriptures. When I do feel fear or I'm anxious or worried about tomorrow, then I think about what Jesus said and what the scripture says. And I think about God who loves me mm -hmm. and who will provide because He's all-powerful. Um, he does not lack. He, he can never lack. And so that's, that's the God that we worship. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he would, he would bring Jesus as a man to let us know that. I really like the first point, uh, that God cares for creation. And was something that uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf also said, it's the constant, it's the stability in today's world amongst everything that is so unstable, especially this past year. We've had to pivot so many things and we already and we're all going into a place still of uncertainty of what it would look like and we've heard people say it's not going to be what it was like before well what is it going to be like we actually don't eat, we even with meeting in church we still don't have all of those things it's not a really clear picture but there's one thing that is stable god has given us creation and every single day uh, you know a and a diagnosis, a prescription for depression or anxiety would be go look, go outside, go look at the flowers, go look at the trees, look at the mountains. I mean, we live, at least here in Vancouver, we live in such an astounding place on the planet for creation. And we can look at those gorgeous mountains and the, the ocean and say, God, you created all this. It was the same yesterday as it is today. It was the same pre-pandemic as it is today so we can stay on that stability that you have things under control yeah and ultimately it creation points to the creator even paul talks about that people have no excuse because yes. if you look at creation 
And so that's that's for us, even especially as believers, we'll, we'll look at the creation. We're like, yes, we're reminded again that there's uh, a designer that has designed this world to be a certain way. And so, and that designer is a personal God. He's not just some force out there, but he's actually involved in his creation. He didn't just create and say, okay, um, here you go. Now you just, I'll just sit back and watch. Yeah. Oh, but so he actually thankful. is involved. Yeah, so thankful on that. Uh, I love that question marks. You know, where we have question marks, God puts, you know, don't put question marks where God has put periods. Albert Einstein, the quote that we heard from Pastor Dave, most important decision we make is whether we believe we live in a friendly place or a, host a friendly or a hostile universe. So much of it is dependent on how we think about it. But again, the correlation with our words. Ugh. Those words. I think you were you, met, you were telling me yesterday how it corresponds with Matthew chapter 15. Yeah, so I was thinking about that, and I'm like, wow, it, it actually talks about how um, Jesus says what comes out of your mouth is what defiles a person. Because um, the religious leader was saying, hey, your disciples are not washing their hands ceremonially, and they're not doing the right movements and whatever, however Were they long. in COVID? I, they, hey, <laughs> they were doing really well during COVID, yeah. <laughs> um, so they they were very much so um, about the the way that they washed their hands. So Jesus says it's not about what goes in, in your stomach, in your mouth, but it's what comes out. And so that's what defiles us. And I think we have to uh, keep remembering that, like Pastor Dave said, what go what's happening in our minds doesn't necessarily have to come out. And I think a lot of times... Things do come out, and especially to people where it shouldn't. Sometimes God, I believe God can handle things that are going on in our minds and we express it in prayer when we're anxious or when we're depressed. But a lot of times what we do, instead of taking it to God, we take it to other people or we just keep it to ourselves and we speak it out Yeah. instead of um, intentionally conveying a message that's within our heart or what we're struggling with to God instead. Oh, that is such a good point, isn't it? How many times have we caught ourselves, myself, I think all of us can say at some point, rather than first going to our Father, our Heavenly Father, as we heard about, going to Him first and saying, I need... I, this is, I'm really wrestling with this. And something happens when you even speak that out to the Father God rather than to other people. When you speak it to, I find, when people have spoken to me or I've spoken it to others, I will speak the worry. I will speak the, the I will speak, oh, and it's so, and I, you just feel so down. When I speak it to the Lord, I speak it to him because I'm giving it to him. And you have to tell it to him. And as soon as you do that to him, something dispels in your head. It's like the whole lie kind of goes, poof. If it's this, you know, it's like, I, I'm, ne you know, I'm, I'm not going to get a job this year. I, I lost my job. I'm, what do, who am I? Nobody, I'm the wrong age. I, I, I don't have the right education. I don't live in the right place. And you start meditating, thinking about that, and thinking about that, and you talk to a friend, say, I don't know, I don't think I'll ever get a job. I don't, you know, and you start mulling over. And you, what if you have a friend that says, you're right? Mm -hmm. You, you never, I, I, I agree. You're in a, you're in a rough place. Wow, I, I think yeah. I'll pray for you. And then they walk away and they don't actually even pray for you right there. Yeah. It's like, and then you go home and go, wow, now it's really solidified. But if you go into God's presence like that, then scripture starts coming back to mind. And you say, but you've said that with man it's impossible, but with you all things are possible. And you come out of God's presence with hope. Yeah. and That'll preach. And he comforts, right? He comforts. Whenever you're struggling, he will... Uh, reveal truth to you and sometimes it's he convicts us of sin or he he might tell me like far you of little faith right like he did to his disciples right. and says don't you know that i'm there again look at the birds look at the flowers and i think we have to do what paul said in second corinthians 10 5 that we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of god and take every thought captive to obey christ like pastor dave mentioned that verse because we, we don't ultimately wage war according to the flesh, but we do it. Our weapons are to fight. Are, they have divine power. And so we have to use, like Pastor Brad said, worship God. Use, like you said, use God's word, meditate on it, and then praying and giving it to the Lord instead of just giving it to everybody else, what our worries and anxieties are. Wow. Let's do that. Let's cast our cares to the Lord. Let's 
meditate on today. Let's stop and look at the flowers. Can we do that today? Put it in your day timer if you need to. Uh, tell someone, say, I am going to make a point right now. I'm actually going to go outside. I'm going to go find some lilies or flowers, or I'm going to go, I'm going to go look at some birds in the air, and I'm just going to meditate on how amazing it is God cares for them. God bless you. Enjoy your week. Love you guys.